Yeah, thank you, Ashutosh. Uh, very warm, good afternoon, good evening to all of you. Uh, I hope uh, you and your families are staying safe and healthy. All my prayers for your safety. I would like to welcome you also to the Q4 and full year earnings conference call of Deepak Fertilizer. I hope you have all had a chance to look at the financial statement and earnings uh, presentation uploaded on the exchanges and our website. Ashutosh, my uh, voice is okay? Yes, sir, your voice is okay. Okay, I'll continue. Thank you. So, our performance during the year has indeed been heartening. And in fact, uh, this has indeed been for our finance performance. During the year, we recorded uh, revenue growth of over 24% over the previous year. And our EBITDA doubled and net profit grew by over 4.5 times compared to FY20. This robust performance was driven by profitable growth in both the chemicals as well as fertilizer business verticals with chemicals contributing about 80% of our profitability. So in a sense, uh, Deepak Fertilizer uh, is a little bit of a misnomer uh, with 80% contributing uh, contribution coming from chemicals. Better working capital management and better profitability generated uh, almost 1248 crore of cash flows. And the net debt, we could also pare it down, reduce it by almost 840 crores during the year. So now, as I was looking at while the details, uh, uh, our CFO, President Finance, uh, Amitabh, would be sharing with you, I thought I could touch upon at, a, I would say, a strategy level, uh, what I think, uh, you know, worked and touch upon those aspects uh, which would be giving you a broader picture. So, if I ask myself what worked and I further ask myself, will it sustain? And here are the thoughts I was wanting to share. One is uh, last year, last two years, but last year in particular, we have had a huge focus on cost optimization and also uh, building some very, very robust system. We have invested time and energy on to uh, creating a raw material prognosis system, uh, systems to uh, usually improve the logistics management. A lot of focus on energy and raw material efficiency improvement. We have, uh, as a team, invested a lot of time, energy on an end-to-end -end SNOP system, which is the sales and operations planning, where right from demand generation to raw material planning is all integrated on a IT platform. We also invested into uh, getting and analyzing the big data from farmers as a part of our fertilizer uh, improvement system and lots of other work. So this is one area which I feel helped and over the years it will continue to help in terms of a backbone. Second aspect that I, uh, we saw was uh, a certain shift from uh, China to India and in particular we saw that for our customers of nitric acid this came out to be a positive trend and that in turn has given us a positive current in the nitric acid business, which also I see as a trend likely to sustain and continue. The third aspect that we saw was that the key investments that we had made in the last three, four years, uh, initially if you recall the tripling of our fertilizer capacity, couple of years back uh, what we are invested into, the Dahage asset complex. These investments have begun bearing fruits and these have validated 
what we had visualized in terms of uh, benefits. The fourth aspect is that we saw IPA demand in pharmaceuticals and hygiene uh, hand sanitizer needs continue. Of course, we did have some unplanned downtime because of catalyst change and that got delayed because of COVID the shipment. But otherwise, IPA remains in a now a good stable phase. But the most important thing that I feel as an undercurrent that we saw getting validated and we also see its positive current sustaining is that we saw all our three businesses, the industrial chemical, the mining chemical, and fertilizer, all of them have been beautifully aligned with the country's growth story. And as we see India grow, whether in terms of its power needs derived from coal or its cement needs derived from limestone or the other infrastructure needs or the requirements of the pharmaceutical sector where India continues to play a good role in the global pharma sector. Uh, mining chemicals, industrial chemicals will have some excellent tailwind for further growth. So also as India's middle income group grows, the need for quality fruits and vegetables, horticulture and the other food security requirements are only going to grow. So all the three sectors that we are into uh, are gaining positive traction from their beautiful alignment with the country's growth story. And that is something that panned out last year and I believe it will sustain over the years to come. The other aspect and other question that could come to anyone's mind is, will the margin sustain, particularly because of the large raw material hike that has happened and we have seen, uh, you know, uh, I would say in this early part of the quarter, first quarter. So there what we see is that uh, certainly the cost optimization uh, efforts and initiatives that we have made are going to continue and are going to further make inroads in the current year, which will help us to, you know, contain and insulate the margin. Second, uh, more important that we see is that we still have capacities as potentials, which we still need to tap. In some of the plants, we have reached maybe 80%, 85%, and we have another 10%, 15% available capacities for upsides. Plus, with a little bit of, uh, I would say, margin in investment by way of debottlenecking, we could further enhance capacity. And that, of course, would help lowering the fixed cost. The third aspect that we are seeing is that demand for our finished products are all good. And with that positive current in the demand, a certain degree of pass-through of the cost is also something that we see quite workable, quite palatable. Uh, the fourth aspect that uh, we are looking at when it comes to sustaining the margin, we are seeing that the product differentiation and the segment-based strategy that we have now implemented, not just in uh, fertilizers, but in uh, even tan and other businesses, is certainly allowing us to somewhere have a good elbow room for premiums. And that is also something that is going to help insulate and sustain the margins. Uh, above all, we also see that uh, one large impact of cost increase came in in the fertilizer sector as the global players 
increase the prices of phosphoric acid DAP hugely. Now that part of it uh, was sitting heavy on us as everyone else in the industry. But we are happy to share that the government has taken quick and effective steps where they announce a huge hike in the DAP phosphoric acid P subsidy, uh, almost 200% uh, kind of addition. And that is going to somewhere mitigate a large chunk of the cost increase that uh, emerged because of uh, the raw material increase to the fertilizer business. What it also does is it will allow us in the industry to continue to provide fertilizers at a reasonable price to the farmers and the worry that there could be any demand destruction because of price hikes is also something that is behind us now. As you are also aware, a number of uh, weather apps, SkyMat and others, have predicted normal standard monsoon. So that is also going to be something that is going to help brisk movement in the fertilizer business. So with that, I do feel that uh, what had worked for us in the last year has strong grounds to continue and sustain in the current year. The margins uh, that we saw somewhere along, despite the highest in raw material prices, we are seeing, you know, a decent mechanism to deal with that. Now, going forward, and this I am stretching beyond the next 12 months from a larger picture perspective, how do I see things panning out? So number one is that certainly the available capacity headroom will further help to bring the upside in the years ahead. Second aspect that is there is that the balance profitable capex plan that uh, you know we have in mind is going to be hugely leveraging 40 years of our industry knowledge, it will risk mitigate thanks to the backward integration and standalone itself we are seeing very good 18 to 20 percent IRR. That is going to be going forward uh, also another thing that is going to have a very positive impact as we go forward. But above all, uh, one aspect that we are seeing which is going to transform and change the very face of the companies and the businesses is our strategic drive to move from commodity to speciality or to change our business model and refocus from product to total solution. Uh, I will give you one example of the success story as we see it emerging and we got a very good taste of it, a very good validation of it in the fertilizer business. In the fertilizer business, Smart Tech, the unique NPK that we make, we could raise its sale from around 2,20,000 tons to 4,38,000 tons. As you are aware and Amitabh will explain more, the top line and bottom line both have had a very heartening upliftment in the fertilizer business. Now, over the last year, with this kind of a smart tech product going in the market, we are very happy to share that we have now garnered almost two and a half million farmers as our customers, repeat customers. And that is giving me the satisfaction and validation that pricing, value proposition, yield, focus on quality, focus on service levels at the, at the field level, all of it 
as a business model is getting validated now even during the covid period the team had almost 18000 webinar touch points with farmers we touched almost 10 lakh farmers through social media additionally we are looking at now a pipeline of crop specific unique products we have invested heavily now in creating an ip knowledge base not just on the basis of the applied r&d for the products but intensively looked at a new organization structure training it tools big data analytics and creating a marketplace that appreciate value rather than just focusing on price now this aspect of moving from commodity to specialty or from product to holistic services is going to be something that in the next few years will deepen and widen in all the three segments and it promises to somewhere change the very face and transform the company from what it is today to what we see it emerging in the next few years so with that positive note and a broad strategy uh, outline i will now hand over to amitabh to take you through the details and then of course uh, be available for uh, any questions and any clarifications that you may seek thank you and take care be healthy be safe amita yes uh, th- thank you mr mehta uh, uh, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and thank you for joining the deepak fertilizer and petrochemicals uh, uh, conference call to discuss cq4 and full year fy21 results i was uh, planning to cover uh, some ground but i think uh, uh, mr mehta has has uh, covered uh, a, a lot of ground in his uh, opening remarks uh so let me uh, very quickly i think i'll i'll skip some of my my speech and i'll just uh uh come back to uh the fact that uh during the year our manufactured chemical business recorded a revenue of uh, 2657 crores in fy21 and this was an increase of 17.4% compared to fy20 manufactured ipa recorded growth of 50% to 586 crores manufactured assets for the year recorded a revenue of 530 crores uh, which is increase of 13.25% compared to last year and the strong growth in nitric acid business was uh, it was mainly driven by a substantial increase in demand and resulted in better realization in addition the hedge plant operated uh, at the full capacity during uh, q4 fy21 uh, which uh, resulted in an increase of uh, cna sales volume Uh, up by almost 51% compared to last year manufactured tan recorded an outstanding quarter uh, supported by strong demand for uh, low density ammonium nitrate and an melt uh, these are the two tan products uh, we achieved highest ever quarterly an melt volumes during the quarter the revenue of tan business was 1138 crores during the year in line with the improvement in cement and steel related sectors in the domestic market in q4 demand for elden also improved the improved domestic demand resulted in a better price realization for an melt and h10 and the same helped us to record robust profits in tan business this year despite lower volumes which were largely impacted in h1 due to lockdown uh, i think fertilizer aspect uh, mr mehta covered the the other uh, the other small part that i might mention is that other than our uh, np and npk a uh, smart tech product uh benself uh, which is another product that we have the sales increased by 27.13% to about 70 crores in fy21 primarily driven by differentiated super fast uh, benself we had launched in q1 of fy21 so so during the year our ipa plant operated at a capacity utilization of 75 79% 
and both assets and tan operated at 74% in the fertilizer segment np and pk plants operated and utilized utilization utilization levels was 73% Ben self uh, operated at 51% uh, utilization, and I, I think that's the point Mr. Mehta was mentioning earlier, that we have sufficient headroom in terms of capacity utilization uh, to to help us meet uh, the demand that we are uh, seeing very strong in each one of our our segments. So uh, I think we remain confident of uh, continuing our growth trajectory while uh, extending full support to our customers, suppliers, and other. Value, uh, valued uh, stakeholders in these testing times. Uh, with this, uh, I'm happy to take uh, your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much.